All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. All right, so this is Sonic Lost World for its uh, Wii U. This game also came out on 3DS, which is a completely different version of the game, and recently got released on PC for Steam, and that's pretty much a direct port of the Wii U version. Pretty good port as well, for the most part. The category that I'm going to be doing, since it's not any percent, is any percent wingless. So to elaborate on what that means, any percent wingless is essentially what any percent in this game would be without a particular helper mechanic. The helper mechanic in this game is that if you dive five times in a row before hitting the next checkpoint, there's basically a wing item that would appear and then you hit that wing item, that'll send you to the next checkpoint without any drawbacks from it. However, that would be slower in most situations, but you can exploit that. If your life count goes to zero when you die, in other words, when you go from one life to zero lives, then the wing item will show up automatically at any checkpoint, really. well, most checkpoints, not any checkpoint. So in a any percent run, you're basically keeping your life count really low throughout the majority of the run, being at one life when you want to set up a checkpoint abuse and at zero after the checkpoint abuse has been done. So in any percent wing list, you basically just go through the levels normally, no, I would say cheese in the level screw depth abuse. Now, the level that I'm in currently is actually DLC. It's free DLC for the game. It's the Legend of Zelda DLC. Now, before this DLC got released, the primary way of getting what I'm about to get was through these carnival-like mini games. Because in this game, you actually have to save animals before you can progress to the next area a certain amount. In order to complete the game in its entirety, you have to collect a total of 5,000 animals before you make it to the final act of the game. But thanks to the Legend of Zelda Zone, I'm not going to have to worry about using those carnival mini games. Instead, I'm going to do a bit of grinding here because the amount of rupees that you get in this stage are converted to animals by the end of it. I actually like this method a bit better than the old method where you had to go through the carnival mini games because it kind of messes with the flow of the game. With the carnival mini games, you have to collect a certain amount of red rings in a zone, and then after that, the carnival will show up. And after you do a carnival, it doesn't stay there forever. You have to do one or two levels before it'll show up again. So the typical flow would be do two levels, carnival mini game, do two levels, carnival mini game. And there was a bit of luck involved with that as well. So this actually reduces the luck that you see in the run. And in addition to that, it makes the run a bit more streamlined because once I'm done with this grinding session, I'll be able to just go from level to level and I shouldn't have to worry about animal count. Just to play it a bit safe, I'm gonna grab a few more rupees than I normally do. And that's gonna allow me to just run through the game and I shouldn't have to worry about any animals throughout the duration. I'm gonna collect a few when it's not gonna cost me any time or anything, but provided that I collect enough here, I shouldn't have to worry about animal count whatsoever. The thing is, I won't be able to know that until either A, I hit 5,000 animals or I make it to the final level and Unfortunately, it's not at 5,000, but that shouldn't be an issue. So while I'm doing this grinding, I'll just talk a bit about the game and this mechanic so you'll be a little bit familiar with it. So in this game, it plays quite a bit differently than other Sonic games. What you will see me be using a lot is what you're seeing right now. Sonic basically has a spin dash, but if you let go of the spin dash button afterward and hold on to the spin dash button again, this allows you to do a infinite spin dash, and I like to think of it as kind of a nerfed boost if you're familiar with the Rush games or Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Colors, Sonic Generations. Because you can plow through some enemies, not all, and there are few restrictions. You're restricted a little bit more than you are in boost in terms of what you can and can't destroy. And the speed isn't quite as good, especially when you have to jump. But that's how I like to look at that. And new to this game is a parkour mechanic. The parkour mechanic you'll be seeing me use quite a bit of as well because in a number of stages it's actually required in order to beat the level. And the parkour mechanic basically allows Sonic to run up walls, run along walls, and jump from wall to wall. He can also grab on the edges similar to the way he could in Sonic Adventure 2. 
Now, there's also a exploit that you're going to be seeing me use in some scenarios where if you jump away from a wall, the game doesn't take away your ability to re-parkour on the same wall, which they normally did that to prevent you from breaking stages, but if you jump away from a wall, it'll retain that property, and then you can use your double jump to cancel that momentum and go back to the same wall. And by doing that, you can either make it through some areas faster than you normally can, or you can make it to some areas that you're not supposed to make it to whatsoever. So this is an extra depth that I'm going to take just to ensure that I have enough animals by the time I make it out of, or make it to the end of the game. So normally I would continue and grab some rupees at the end, but this should make it so that I do not have to worry about animal count whatsoever. I don't have to worry about running back to another stage at the end, because if you don't have enough animals, you're going to have to run through any stage of your choose, and I have to pick a short one, but you have to actually complete the stage. You can't go into a stage, get animals, and then just exit out. So by doing this, I will definitely have enough animals just from collecting some as I clear stages or hit capsules within the stages themselves. So that's the Legend of Zelda Zone. And now we're going to be heading over to Windy Hill 2. There are four zones in every area. I'm used to calling them acts, even though they call them zones in this game. So if you hear me say acts, that's what I'm talking about. Just the stage itself, not the entire area. But there's four stages in each area, and there are seven areas total. For Windy Hill 2, it's not too much that's going to be going on. You're going to see a lot of spin dashing and jumping and one thing is when you're doing your infinite spin dash if you're holding on to the spin dash button upon landing you will actually do a instant spin dash upon landing you can opt in or out of doing that though so most of the time you're going to want to do it but in some situations you're going to not want that booster speed when you land you might have to do some platforming or things of that nature so now we have the first boss fight of the game. This is Zaz. He's part of the Deadly Six. And one thing that I'll go ahead and mention while we get into these boss fights. One of the things about this game is that I say that it's pretty difficult from the stage aspect. But the boss fights, for the most part, are really easy to do. And they're going to be pushovers primarily because of another new mechanic in the game, which is the multi-lock-on for your homing attack. If you notice, I didn't always homing attack instantly. Instead, I would wait, and you would see the target gain more circles. When you max out how many targets you have, you do a homing attack that does triple the damage. So normally, these boss fights are going to be six hits. But if you do your multi-lock-on, then it'll turn into a two-hit boss fight. And that's really what takes out a lot of the difficulty for these boss fights. And now we have a tunnel-like le level in Windy Hill 3. These are basically have a bunch of tubes that you go through and not too much going on in these. So if you have some donations, now would be a good time to read maybe two of them. All right, we have a $5 donation from Anonymous. Lost one grandparent to cancer. Love what you do. We have a $50 donation from Sonic Boom. Here's to my favorite Hatsune Miku, Super Mario Maker, and Sonic Runner's Let's Player, Dark Spine Sonic. I woke, up, I woke up at 5 a.m. just to catch this run. Also, shout outs to SJ and maybe Burton. This money goes to DSS's choice. That's not good. Normally, you can take damage on top of those spikes and then spin dash across. It looks kind of risky, but as long as you spin dash as soon as you get hit, you'll be fine. And now we're making our way to the end of the level. You notice these uh, green sections. That's basically slime. If you go into the slime, it'll kill your spin dash. And that's not a good thing. I'm usually posting brain slug when I see them. <laughs> but yeah. And at the end of most levels, not all of them, at the end of most levels, you will see a capsule. And every time you finish a stage and land on a capsule, you get 30 animals. So at this stage of the game, because of how high my animal count is, just from completing the levels alone, I should be fine when I get to the end. And if you notice for that, I needed 100 animals to unlock zone four of the first area. And that's what I mean. So we don't have to worry about getting any of those animals or anything like that. Just keep everything streamlined. And... Windy Hill 4 is, once again, a pretty straightforward 
level. The game starts off pretty slow and then things pick up in DR1 or Desert Ruins 1, which is probably my favorite zone in the game. And you'll see why for obvious reasons when I get there. That's the very next zone though. And these sheep pretty much like to ruin your day. If they run into you, you will get hit and you can't really stop yourself. So sometimes they like to actually hit you right at the edge. And if they hit you at the edge, you will more than likely fall off. And that'll cause you to have to go back. This game, for the most part, is pretty forgiving in the beginning. But with some of the tricks that I'm going to have to do later in the run, I can end up losing a lot of time. Sloppy. Also, the thing is, uh, gravity works kind of wonky in some areas in this game. Uh, I completely, for the most part, it likes to do what it's supposed to do, but every now and then, it might see something a little wonky happen. Most of the time, it's not going to be so much so that it'll kill you, but just burn a little bit of time. For the most part, when you're doing this speedrun, it's mostly about knowing when to jump, when not to jump. Kind of. As far as like runs that I've seen, but not really run myself, it kind of reminds me of like a older Super Mario Bros. run in terms of knowing when to jump and what have you. And yeah, that's another thing. Sonic has two forms of attack. He has a kick and a homing attack. The kick is slow in pretty much every situation where the homing attack works, but there are going to be some enemies later that a kick is required in. If you try to do a home attack, you just take damage. And that's a little bit of the parkour that I was talking about. That actually went really nicely. But you can sometimes use the parkour just to give yourself an extra jump. You'll be seeing that a lot as well in the run. Primarily in 2D though. Not really in 3D. In 3D, you just use it to scale certain sections. Now in some boss fights, it's not always optimal to do a fully charged home attack. Sometimes it's better to do a half charged one and then attack one more time as you just saw. There were actually two moon mechs on the screen at the same time. Due to the fact that when he jumped in the air, it was still phase one. But when the final home attack landed, it shifted him into phase two. And you'll see another example like that in area number four. And that completely skips the second phase of a boss fight, which is really nice. So now we're going to get to the second area in the game, Desert Ruins. And the game has seemed pretty tame so far in terms of, you know, glitches and breaks and stuff like that. But things are going to pick up really quickly once I get out of DR1. Now one thing that I wanted to show off when I was running this in a marathon is what a lot of people don't know about in this game is that if you do an infinite spin dash, let it run out and then pick it back up as Sonic is doing that roll, you get this other weird type of roll in the game and this allows you to go over certain sand that you normally wouldn't be able to which is kind of cool i use it um in the second section more so than the first section first section it doesn't really help too much you now this is a platform of shame as i like to call it because if you mess this up you have to take that platform and i just got um nom pretty hard <laughs> so that's why i hit the checkpoint normally i skip it if it was an il but just because of stuff like that, you know, marathon setting. I want to make sure that you're fine if you do take that death. These worms aren't actually a one-hit kill unless you're in the middle. Because you basically get eaten. But if you run into it from the side, it's fine. Just take damage. I didn't account for that on the spin dash from earlier. But this stage is basically 3D. And the 3D is pretty straightforward. You just spin dash through knowing where to go and then you enter a 2d section which uses a lot of wall running this is kind of like the stage to get you used to the 2d parkour mechanics that's what i like to say and you'll notice when i'm on this type of sand i'm jumping a lot that's because if you just try to spin dash regularly on that sand then it'll kill all of your speed and that's not a good thing and as you're gonna see a lot of wall running this is one example of the wall jump exploit that I was talking about earlier. If you jump away from the wall and then you jump back at it, you're allowed to rerun on the same wall and try to make it in here. There we go. I should use the bounce attack here to get enough height because if you do a triple bounce, you get slightly more height than a double jump. Don't use it too many times in the run, but the times where you do use it, it is quite a bit faster. And I'm intentionally taking damage at the top of these. You can actually grab onto the top and more or less shimmy your way across, but that's really slow. So I'm gonna use this spin dash here so I can just roll through the sand. 
It's a little bit slower than a fully charged spin dash or your typical spin dash, but this is a lot easier and safer because you can go around things, except for this fire orb and not actually have to jump here. And I mean, when you jump, you go back to your normal spin dash, so it's all good. And there we go. That's DR1. So, now is where things pick up a bit because our next stage is going to be DR2, which is a auto run level. However, I'm not going to be doing a auto run throughout the entire level. In fact, I'm going to be free falling for the majority of it. Now, this strategy, there are actually multiple ways to break out of here and fall to the end. The strategy I'm going to be doing is the most consistent, roughly around the same time as the harder, more inconsistent strategies. So. I'm going to be using a visual cue with this wood to the left. And I should be able to grab onto the side of this instead of spring off the flower. If I'm in the right spot, I can double jump, spin dash, jump. And I didn't hit the kill plane. Now, if I land on the invisible floor, I should be good. And I did. So now instead of running through the level like normal, we're going to free fall. Now, it's not just smooth sailing from here. There's actually a few kill planes that can get in my way. But if I set up these visual cues right I should be fine because I'm going to need the gravity to pull me back in once I get towards the final section. So if I start moving down now, I'll either hit a kill plane or I should get pulled back into the stage. Now I'm going to be going at like normal walking speed, but these honeycombs, if you make contact with them while you're moving, then you'll actually splat even if you're going at like one mile per hour. So you want to make sure that you're not holding on to anything once you get to that part. And I just skipped the entire level, and now we have the... And now we have the second member of the Deadly Six, which is Zomom. And once again, this fight really isn't difficult. You just have to make sure that you don't fall off. Basically, flips this structure over, and then he falls down, and can do a fully charged homing attack. I like to jump off right here, make it seem like I'm going to die, but... Just get knocked back up. And you do the same thing, but this time he's going to flip it twice. The best thing that you can have him do is flip it over to the flat side because then you don't really have to worry about any thing getting in your way when you're trying to make it to him. But he can flip it back to where it originally was as well. He's going to put it on the flat side, so that's nice of him. And then we wait and we can jump onto him while he's on his way down. Take damage, but he won't die. And there we go. That's DR2. And now we're going to be heading over to DR3, which is actually not Desert Ruins 3, it's Desert Ruins 3. And you'll see why when I get in there. But there's actually another really big break, and it's probably one of my favorite breaks in the game. I wish it was a little bit more consistent, but I'll hope for the best when I do this. So in Desert Ruins 3, there's actually... <laughs> hope everyone ate... But yeah, there's actually a really cool clip you can do at the beginning. There's two layers of floor. I want to break through the first one, but not the second one immediately, because I'm going to want to preserve my double jump. So we're going to actually face this way, double jump, and that's the inconsistency that I'm talking about. So he actually clipped through both. Uh, after he clips through the first one and lands on the second one, I'm just going to run to the right, do a jump, and if I'm not over to the right too much, then he'll end up not hitting the kill plane because I don't want to hit the kill plane. Then he'll be falling for the while, the camera will do its thing, and then at a certain point, I will do a double jump, wait a little bit, and then do a bounce attack. And if all goes well, that should put me at the end of the stage. So that's the breakthrough, that's the fall, get a camera change, we're gonna get another one, double jump, bounce attack. And if you fall down, it's fine because these cannons catch you. Where you land can vary a lot. You can uh, land right next to the capsule. You can land right here. Or you can land where I landed, which is where the cannon was. But Either way, you skip the entirety of the level. And now we have every speed runner's favorite type of level, an auto-scroller. However, there are some things that I can do to make this a bit more interesting, but you'll see that in the second auto-scrolling section. Now, although the first auto-scrolling section is a bit less eventful, you actually can manipulate your time because the way these sections work, 
is that there are triggers throughout the level that when Sonic makes contact with them, the tornado will either speed up or it'll slow down. So right in front of me at this incline is one that's going to make it slow down. So I want to hit that as late as possible without taking a death. And then I want to go all the way to the right because the next trigger actually speeds it up. And right here there's a trigger that's going to slow it down. But right on the other side of this sand, there's going to be a trigger that speeds it back up. So as long as you just make it through that. Nice and clean, you don't really lose any time. It's easier to see the time save when you're doing time attack mode, which you unlock after beating the stage, because the checkpoints will tell you whether you made up time, lost time, or got the same time. And now we have our first usage of a wisp in this game, which is drill. Drill is just used to burrow underground, or in some cases underwater, which I won't be doing the underwater variant in the speed run. This is a requirement because you could see a wall that I could have potentially scaled up, but unfortunately that would have done nothing. This enemy right here is random. It can show up at the bottom, the middle, or the top, but either way, it doesn't affect too much if you hit it immediately. A little bit of struggle back there, but it's all good. Now, this is the interesting part because as I said before, there are triggers that speed it up and slow it down. Now, in this section, it's going to speed up a lot more when I hit the spring coming up. But I want to retain that speed, so I'm going to do something a bit risky. I'm going to need to keep a wall in between me and Sonic. And the only way to do that is with the infinite wall jump exploit. Now, if I'm careful, I shouldn't hit the kill plane. Because I'm using a mechanic that makes me slide down the wall slower. Now, I'm hanging on to the edge. Now, if I jump, I would die. But if I do a double jump, I can actually do a mid-air spin dash, and that keeps me alive. And now we're going to do this one more time if all goes well. I was almost bad. And now we're going to see my good buddy floating in the air. What's up? I'm going to jump down, and we're at the boss fight. Now, that part is a bit scary since you can't really see what's going on but it's not too bad overall so you do it enough times and we can actually beat so mom to the next segment but that doesn't do anything because you have to wait for him anyway and this part he's going to actually go into a tornado form himself and you have to wait for him to finish so i just like to mess around a bit show off the infinite wall exploit and maybe spin dash over here drop down Increase my APM. <laughs> and then I'll just chill at the top. So I'm out. Yeah, that's Desert Ruins 4. So, coming up next, we have Tropical Coast 1. Not too much is going to be happening until I get to the end. So, during the donations, you can probably squeeze in about 2. All right, so we have $25 from Rookie 185 This Sonic block is awesome. Needs to be extended with fan favorites like Sonic 06 and Sonic Unleashed next time. Good luck to the runners. You're doing an amazing job. Greetings from Germany. We also have $15 from Anonymous. Love watching what you guys do. Keep destroying the games. Shout out to DSS and Comfy. All right, so working our way towards the end of the level you're going to actually see the infinite wall run exploit again but this time it's going to be in 3d instead of 2d now for 3d it's pretty much the same thing you just jump away from the wall and then you jump back onto the same wall but in 3d you'll notice that you're actually traversing along the wall instead of going straight up there is a straight up variant as well but I won't be needing that you'll see it later in the run and for the end here, there's actually a exploit or a glitch, you could say, that I'm going to be using. There are cloud sections in this game, and in those cloud sections, Sonic doesn't use his normal mechanics. He has this, like, really slow cloud platforming type of mood. But if you do a bounce attack and then cancel the bounce attack, you can do a spin dash by just holding on to the spin dash bu uh, button. You buffer it. And that allows you to actually use your spin dash on the clouds instead of going really slow. I'm going to be 
careful here. Just to show you a little bit of the cloud mechanics, that's how slow you normally go. <laughs> so it's nice that you're actually able to do the spin dash on these clouds. If you happen to not hold spin dash when you do your bounce attack, you can regain the ability to do that, but you can't grab onto the edge of clouds when using the cloud mechanics, so you typically have to take damage from an enemy and then jump and then start it back up. And you'll see that in a later stage, the next area actually. And we got Tropical Coast Zone 2, and we're going to be using another Wisp in this one, which is Rocket. And Rocket pretty much shoots you straight up, can aim prior to. And I'm going to be using that to skip a section. Depending on where I'm facing when I use the Rocket, I should be able to make it up to a later section in the level, which this isn't the intended way to do it, but... Depending on where I fire, it's going to determine how much leeway I have, or if I have no leeway at all. And that should be good. Nice. If you don't get enough height, you can't... If you don't get enough height, you actually can't grab onto the edge there, and that's what makes it a bit scary. If you could grab onto the edge, then it wouldn't matter. But that went well. Uh, the trick is to aim it a bit further away than closer. You think that if you aimed it closer, you'd be fine, but... The closer you aim it, the less leeway you have. But if you aim it too far, then you won't be able to make it back in time. And this is the third member of the Deadly Six, which is Zeke. It's like the one for Wisdom. He always reminds me of, I think the name is Master Shofu from Kung Fu Panda. He gives off that kind of vibe. It always comes to my mind when I fight this boss. But once again, another easy boss fight. Just double fully charged homing attacks and call it a day. So now we're going to be heading over to Tropical Coast 3 and this one is a bit different than the other stages that I've played. This is a rail stage and there are two rail stages in the game. The next one I'm not going to encounter until I get to the final area though. Now for these rail stages I'll explain a little bit how it works. Um, there are three rail speed, silver rails or your average speed, green rail speed you up and red rail slow you down if you jump and hold forward while on a rail you actually get more speed than standing on the rail itself and in addition to that if you do a double jump one frame after letting go of the jump button you'll get an increased jump height on your double jump like that so you can actually clear that trolley now it's 3d sections and 2d sections i'm gonna try to do 3d and 2d here but i actually didn't get it didn't want to land on the red rail but in 2d sections you actually go slower than you would in 3d sections but you can actually have 3d properties in a 2d section and if you have that you'll go a lot faster in the next rail stage that i get to you're going to see me do that twice if all goes well in this stage you only get one and that's the first one there is something cool that i can still show for the second section though which is also kind of risky but if i die there's a checkpoint right before it Assuming I don't get caught by the fan anyway, so. Uh, if I hit the kill plane, it's pretty funny to see, but it will waste some time. If I don't, then you'll see me get a lot of height and a lot of distance. This is kind of luck, though, because I need to hope that this fan isn't going to be in my way if I want to get maximum distance, and it's not cool. So you're going to see Sonic kind of blast off, and then double jump, and there we go. That was really nice. Now, there was actually a kill plane right above my head, so if I was any higher than that, you would have saw Sonic flip gravity and peace out for a little while. And I would have went back to the previous checkpoint, which is right at the beginning of the 2D section, so uh, not too bad. I do take damage sometimes. The way that you want to optimize these stages is that you want to be going down as much as possible, and you want to only really, excuse me, you only really want to jump when you're going up because that's going to slow you down. And we got green rails. and At the end, we're going to have some more green rails, so you'll be able to see the speed difference between the silver rail and the green rail, like right here. Um, I don't think that if you jump and hold forward on green rails, you get an increase in speed, at least nothing that I can notice. But it might be a very slight increase. And then you got the final band here, which sometimes is kind of wonky. Sometimes you gotta jump all the way out there. If you do run into the fan, you don't just take damage. It's a one-hit KO, so that's the main reason why you don't want to touch them. Otherwise, you could just play it safe and stay on the rail and just tank a hit and run through because there are plenty of rings in the level itself. 
So now we have Tropical Coast 4. In Tropical Coast 4, we're going to be using Rocket yet again. Now at the beginning, there is supposed to be at least one planet that you go to, and it's supposed to be mandatory, but I'm going to be doing a series of blind fires, and if I aim at the right location, I should be able to make it all the way to the end of the first section without landing on any other planet. We'll see. That's a good angle for the first one. The camera is based off of how you use your first rocket, so you're not going to be able to see the next balloon. I have a pretty good idea of where it's at, and you can just make it if you aim it right. And then the second one is a bit more lenient. Nice. Now this part always scares me a little bit because there's a kill plane right here. So if I aim at the wrong spot, I'm going to take a death and hopefully that doesn't happen. Nice. That was a little off. That was a little bit more to like... <laughs> If I was just a little bit more to the left or right, I probably would have died there. It's only difficult because you can't really see where the final platform is based off of the camera that I had. But that's the best camera to have to know where to aim. So it's like a trade-off. And then we have a pretty lengthy 2D section. Not going to be too much going on in here outside of just spin dashing and going where to jump. So if you have two donations, now will be a good time for it. All right. We have a $250 donation from Chase40. Finally get to watch AGDQ live. This is the money that I received working overtime on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. I know that I am lucky and would like to give to those who weren't so lucky. Put this money towards Legend of Zelda file named Narcissa. We also have a $100 donation from Danny212. Love watching Sonic speed runs. Sonic looks fantastic when done quickly. Good luck to all the runners. Hopefully we get enough donations for the bonus Super Mario 3 bro run later today. Save the animals, but kill the Yoshis. Alright, so we're nearing the end of the 2D section. And after that we're going to have the second boss fight with Zeke and that one I don't know he, he kind of plays a game of runaway you have to go to whatever planet he goes to and pretty much put him in check so this one is going to last a little bit longer than you normally see boss fights last but that's only because I have to find him hit him find him hit him and then find him one final time for the final hit now Sometimes this boss can be a little glitchy for the second part. The first part should be fairly easy to do, but if you don't hit him quick enough for the second part, or if you only do a single charge, he's going to have a lot of invincibility frames, and they're not going to allow you to lock on to him whatsoever. So I'm going to hope that I make it to him quick enough and get a proper lock on him. That was good enough. The camera's a little wonky. I'm thinking that the last plan is right here, though. Should be a pineapple planet if I'm in the right location, and I'm not. That's fine, so we're gonna just use this balloon to shoot me straight to it. And there we go. And now the final attack, he doesn't actually use the fear anymore. Oh, that was actually not fully charged. But he still takes five years to attack. Must be the age getting to him, but I don't know. So yeah, the boss fights are really simple in this game and don't really have to worry about those. So next up, we actually have Frozen Factory now. Frozen Factory 1 is a really broken stage, but it's not that, well, I'd say it's kind of easy to see why. But basically, I'll explain how Frozen Factory 1 is supposed to work. You're supposed to make your way to the end of the section, and it brings you up. Then you make it to the end of the section, brings you up. It basically elevates you every time you make it to the end of the section. However, I'm not going to have to worry about that, because in this game... If there is a slope, you can actually just do a double jump and then spin dash. By buffering the spin dash, it lets you stay on that slope. And I pretty much skip the entirety of the first section. And you're going to see another skip towards the end as well, but that's not going to involve spin dashing on the slope. That's just using a wall and just a really huge oversight. Now for this cloud section, I actually can't skip the cloud shenanigans. Or I could take damage and then do a home attack and then take a death because sometimes I just like to waste time. But <laughs> you basically can use enemies to take a hit and then when you take a hit you can jump, bounce attack, cancel the bounce attack and then use your spin dash mechanics. So you're going to see me try to use that one time here as well because that speeds this part up considerably. Sometimes these fire orbanites up ahead do not like to cooperate though, and if they don't, I'm going to take another death. 
and hey, they cooperated. And that allows you to skip all of that, which, as you can see with the cloud mechanics, would take quite a bit of time. Sometimes the fire orb not, they just throw the fire at you and say start over, and you just have to deal with it. And for this part, it's supposed to go to the end, I think, two times, but you can just wall run up normally and hit the spring. That sends you to the end of the stage with the capsule. So that's Frozen Factory Zone 1. And Frozen Factory Zone 2, we have the next member of the Deadly Six, which is Xena. Now this stage is probably one of the more memorable ones when people do their first playthrough or a casual playthrough, but probably for all the wrong reasons. We're not going to have our standard Sonic this time. This time we're going to have a Snowball Sonic. And this level kind of reminds me of Katamari, if you're familiar with that game. And once I get into things, you'll see why I said that. <laughs> but this level is kind of nightmarish when you play it for the first time, just because it's so vastly different from what you're used to. Rings and things that you collect in the stage don't count until you make it to a checkpoint. And you got these pool tables where you could hit all of these in. If you hit all of them in, your reward is a red ring. But I actually don't want to collect too many red rings because if I do, that'll cause a carnival minigame to show up. And if a carnival minigame shows up, then that'll waste a little bit of time. Nothing major, but a waste time nonetheless. Now, you can spin dash while in the snowball, and you can also apply brakes, which you see me do quite a bit. Okay, and this is automatic. I can jump, and it looks like I shouldn't be, but you can. It's perfectly fine. You're locked in at this section. Now, there are two more platforms that are going to go straight up, and I could get an early cycle, depending on how I roll. That might be too late. Just missed it. And if you miss it, you have to wait for it to come back down. And even when you get in position, you still have to wait until the next cycle starts up. So, like, right there. This level is still kind of scary in the speedrun setting due to the fact that you have to do these spin dash jumps. And sometimes there's going to be an enemy in the way, and you actually use the enemy to help you land. Like this one. This is probably the scariest jump in it. So I have to go to the right and then hit off the bed. And up there. Now, you probably noticed some of these smaller yeti right here sometimes they like to cooperate which is cool but sometimes they just like to throw you off the stage and that might happen here i go for it anyway and they cooperated nice good job guys and then we have another pool table not too much going on here after this pool table it's going to be some larger yeti and when you get close enough to them they'll turn red and try to push you off but if you just spin dash into them, then you'll knock them off and they kind of fly off into space for whatever reason. You don't really have to worry about them too much. And then we're going to have one where it's too side by side to like kind of gang up on you. But if you do like a pool shot, kind of like is, I don't know, implied by the stage, you get both of them. And now we're going to be headed to the next boss fight, which is Xena. Probably the most unique one. It's actually impossible to take damage in this boss fight. This boss fight is simply about timing you out, which first time you play the stage, you might be playing it really carefully. And if you play it carefully, you're not gonna have that much time when you make it to the end. So it's kind of the put the pressure on, I would say, but you know, cruising through it like that, I got plenty of time. You can actually soft lock the game if you hit the boss before the fight is supposed to start. So I'm not gonna do that, but this boss fight basically gives you different snowman formations. Um, you don't want to hit any snowmen that have a bomb on their head. Some of the patterns are really easy like that one and then some of them are a bit more interesting like this one. This one is not... Okay. You notice they put the bomb like right there. The whole idea behind that one is to make you think you can just go in a circle and then mess up. There's three of these patterns you have to deal with and then after those three patterns that's the end of the boss fight. She turns into a track star for the final hit. But not fast enough for a snowball sanic. And that's Frozen Factory Zone 2. Now in Frozen Factory Zone 3, we're actually going to be at a casino. Don't ask me why. It just kind of happens. And the casino level is pretty straightforward outside of one part which is probably going to give me some trouble very rarely doesn't give me any trouble and that's the pinball section there are two pinball 
tables in the stage but only one of them is required and that's going to be coming up right after this first section and for the pinball section you basically need to get 1500 points and that'll open up the middle and then you enter the middle and that's it but even if you get the 1500 really quickly you still have to make it into the middle and that's usually where the problems arise unless i land in that middle one which doesn't happen too often for the most part, you don't really have to worry about falling into the middle unless Sonic decides to fall right in there. Doesn't happen often. If you land in the middle though, that makes life easier. That just places you right in there. The rest of the level is pretty straightforward, so if you have two donations, then it would be a good time. Alright. So, Corey B gives $20 saying GDQ marathons are my favorite events in gaming. Good luck to all the runners, thanks for making my work week super entertaining, and kill the animals. We also have a $10 donation from G Squared from George and Georgia. This donation is in memory of Nanny Barrow, who unfortunately lost her life due to cancer. Enjoying the Sonic block, and good luck to DSS on his run. Looking good so far, putting money towards saving the Yoshis. Let's stop cancer. All right, so now we have Frozen Factory 4. And in Frozen Factory 4, it's going to be a lot of ice around. So you're going to see a lot of, skate, a lot of skating in. A lot of ballerina sonic, as I like to call it, when you do a jump. When you're on ice, if you're holding the run button and you jump, you get kind of this ballerina type jump, which in most situations is not good at all because when you do the ballerina jump, it's a committed jump. You can't slow down or anything like that. You can only not jump as high, but if you just let go of the jump button, then you, or not the jump button, but the run button, then you'll do a standard jump where you have all of your air mobility and your double jump. So that's vastly preferred in most situations. But for this stage, oh, I actually got that first ballerina jump. That doesn't happen often. It's nice when it does. So it's gonna be a lot of transition in between 2D and 3D. And for these, you have these boulders that show up. The boulders, if you haven't noticed in earlier stages, track wherever Sonic goes. So for the most part, I'll just be able to kind of bait them over to the right or left and they'll just fall right off and I don't have to worry about them. This section is two of them. The first one is pretty easy to get by. The second one likes to ruin your day quite a bit though, this one. If they run over you, it's not an instant kill, thankfully. It just damages you, but it kills all of your speed in the process. These ice blocks, I can just bounce attack through. Now, there are going to be some crushers coming up really soon. And for a particular set of crushers, I can wedge in right there, but it has a pretty bad hitbox. So sometimes, even if I don't touch anything, I'll take a death. So I just opt to go in the middle. Waste about a second or so, but better than wasting 15 or so going back to the beginning of the section. And then we have another skating session. That's kind of what I meant by baiting it. I didn't actually make it fall off, but still wasn't too much of an issue. I really like these spirals. And there goes all of my speed, which is happening quite a bit more often than it normally does, but it's no big deal. It's not going to cause a death or anything. Hopefully I'm not speaking too soon. But I really like these spirals. You don't have to actually go through them like this, but it is automated. Now for this final sec, or this isn't the final section, but for the this section in particular, it has kind of like a Sonic 2 reference type thing going on if you remember Metropolis Zone. But you don't have to actually use these corkscrews since you can just go up to the top using the wall run exploit. And this part, I actually like this strat because it's going to look like I'm about to get crushed, but if you just hold on to spin dash and let it go as soon as you can, you make it through every time. And then we get a really nice ballerina jump here. Show Sonic in all this glory. <laughs> and then we're going to work our way to the next boss fight, which is, once again, Xena. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier, where it's not always fastest to do a fully charged homing attack. So I'm going to do a double charge, and then a single hit, cancel that, and then I'm going to do a triple hit. So I'm going to get my fighting game skills on. So normally, if you do a fully charged homing attack, you'll see Xena stand all the way up. She'll take her sweet time as well. And then she'll go into a second phase where she has invincibility frames. But thanks to that, you don't have to worry about any of it because the game allows you to hit her earlier than you're supposed to. 
you wait a little bit too long on that, though, unfortunately, she will get the invincibility frames. And I almost waited a little too late, but quite a bit of leeway on that one. So now we're going to enter Silent Forest. And Silent Forest has a neat little skip. I'll talk about it a bit when I get there. I might hit the checkpoint just for safety reasons because if I mess up this skip, it's going to send me all the way back to the beginning because the checkpoint is kind of out of the way. It's not terribly out of the way, but you normally don't run into it, but for marathon reasons, I'm probably going to grab that just in case. I don't want to press my luck too much. So this is what I was talking about earlier in the game. There are some enemies that you have to kick instead of homing attack, and that's the spiders. These spiders contain a butterfly in each of them. You need five butterflies to wake the plant up and then make it to the next section. So if you try to home and attack them when they're up, you get hurt. If you kick them, you knock them down. Now if you kick them and then kick them again, then that'll actually make them get back up. So you have to make sure that you're not spamming anything and know what you're doing. So here's the spider skip because you can actually traverse up this tree. As I said, if there are slopes and you're buffering spin dash, you can actually work your way up. If I can find a good place to start. Let's try right here. Should be working right here. There we go. Start working your way up. I have a pretty good reference point. It doesn't fail me most of the time. It's right here, I believe. Almost fell off right there. And there we go. And if all is well, I should, yeah, land in the next section. Let's grab that while I'm there. And the thing is, it doesn't save that much time. It was actually slower, but it's always nice to show it off in that sense. It's a bit risky, too. I feel like the risk versus reward isn't too promising overall compared to a lot of other tricks in the game, but it's still always nice to show it off. And that's going to conclude Silent Forest Zone 1. Now, Silent Forest Zone 2 is actually another level that I think a number of people struggle with when they're playing through it for the first time. And it's not really the beginning of the level. It's the segment that happens just before the boss fight. There's going to be an owl in the background, and it's going to have a searchlight attached to it. If that searchlight shines on Sonic at any point, then that's going to cause me to take a death, regardless of ring count or anything else. So there's actually something neat that I found out about accidentally, if you will, and it actually makes that section free if you use it properly. Sometimes I get a little bit greedy and things don't work out quite the way that I want it to, but I'll be sure to show that off when I get to that segment. More than likely, I'm going to have to use it to save myself, but it makes life so much easier. And I wish I knew it during my first playthrough, but better late than never, as I would say. For these parts, it actually is kind of a giveaway that you can use your double jump and cancel a spin dash, because that's the only way to go through the loop outside of uh, using the rhythm. Which, if everything goes well, I should never have to use with, uh, rhythm, because rhythm is... Easily the worst wisp in the game. It's really slow. It does save you from getting detected by the searchlight, however, which is really nice, but I shouldn't have to use that if things go well. Thankfully, there's a checkpoint right at the beginning, and there's even a checkpoint in the middle of the section. So if things do go sour, then I shouldn't be losing too much time. So I'm going to press my luck right here and keep going. And even right here, I'm going to press my luck might get detected but I found out that if you crouch or roll the owl actually won't detect you so that makes everything really easy as you can see <laughs> it's pretty silly I'm almost certain that's unintended but I'm not complaining helps immensely that was almost really bad if I would have jumped and then ran into the enemy I would have lost all of my speed and probably got detected that was nice. Now this boss fight is probably the hardest one to optimize, I would say. Because he's going to launch these at you and you can launch an attack back at him. This being Zor, the fifth member of the Deadly Six. And I'm just going to wait right here. I'll probably hit this third one a little bit late. That should work out pretty well. I'd rather have them going opposite ways, but I can work with this. So we're gonna 
kick this one in again. I think if I would have kicked that one, he still would have had his invincibility frames. I would work so. That's that boss fight. Now, despite the fact that we're in Silent Forest and not Frozen Factory, the next stage is actually ice level. And I'm not sure if they did it intentionally or maybe sometime during development they were like, hey, maybe it would be funny if we put an ice zone in a non-ice area. But we're going to have another tube-like stage similar to Windy Hill 3, Silent Forest 3. And it's primarily ice, so you're going to be seeing a lot of ballerina jumps and some normal jumps where I feel like it's going to be the better option. But... For the most part, there isn't too much going on in this stage that I need to elaborate on, so this is probably a good time for maybe three or four donations, really. All right. We have a $10 donation from Let Us Catch a Podcast. Thanks to Alex for spreading the word on this great event. We have a $30 donation from The Guest 217. The guest here haven't been able to watch the event much this year, but GDQs always rekindle my spirit to go fast in my favorites. Here's to another year of going fast to show video games can do good for humanity. There's a lot of you I'd like to thank, so I'll say I know, let's just say I know you know who you are. Runners, organizers, students, and teachers of the games, thank you all. And we have $20 from Vinny saying, thanks DSS for the great commentary. And we have $10 from Unfriendly Blob. Good to see Lost World in GDQ. Just tune into a solid, just tune into a solid at Tropical Coast 3. Keep up the good work, DSS. All right, so the session that we had coming up here, there's actually gonna be a neat little trick that I do because you probably noticed one of those mechs earlier that the bird was in and it's three of them this time, but what I can do is I can actually bait them over here and then double jump over and it tricks the game into thinking that I'm on the other path so I can just go right through and they won't try to flip back over and spoil everything. And now we're going to go for the undoubtedly best part of the run, which is the ballerina jump. Um, if I actually nail this ballerina jump and land on the capsule, that means it's the run regardless of what the rest of the run looks like, so let's hope for the best. Easy every time. <laughs> All right, so next up we have Silent Forest 4. And Silent Forest 4 is going to be pretty much nothing but 2D, but it's going to be a lot of different sections. There is one trick that I'm going to be using in this stage, but that's not going to happen until a bit later in the stage itself. I could do the same trick earlier, which I've called grabber glitch, and I'll explain a bit when I get there, but you can actually do it off of a few grabbers in this stage, grabbers being that enemy that I just went past. There you go, Sonic. You got it. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna essentially allow me to skip a really good portion of the level, or I guess a good portion of the section, not really the level. It's not terribly difficult to do. The thing is, you can get as many tries as you want as long as you don't destroy the enemy. And it's pretty easy to not destroy the enemy. Just do a double jump so you're not in ball form. And everything should be fine. Breathe right under these guys. And we're going to see another mandatory use of the Drill Wisp right here. Now, in these sections, you have a enemy in the middle. And by the beating the enemy in the middle, it'll make those platforms that you saw me going through move. You don't have to actually destroy the first one though. The third one and the fourth one, technically you don't have to destroy the fourth one. There is an alternative method to make it either, but it's slower. So I'm gonna destroy the second, the third, and the fourth one. Or rather the second and the third one. Because otherwise these platforms will be really low and you wouldn't be able to make it up here. Let's see if I can get this jump. I usually miss this every run that I do. Of course. Nothing new. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to have a thing that kind of reminds me of uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns. You know what I'm getting at. And I actually never have to turn on the lights, but this is the grabber glitch. When you break out of the grabber, you're actually either in the foreground or the background. If you do a bounce attack immediately after breaking out of the grabber's grasp, then you can actually be outside of the plane and therefore skip 
certain sections of the level. Most of the time it just results in gravity being all messed up and you not being able to do much of anything to progress, but that is one of the situations where it helps. And there's a theoretical um, section at the beginning where it could help, but I haven't been able to find anything to make that work. It's one of the rare situations where I actually want to get hit and don't. It's all good. Now, this boss fight is actually one where I'm only going to have to do one fully charged home attack. The gimmick for this boss fight is that Zor and his uh, two shadow clones are trying to destroy the platforms. If they destroy too many, you fall into a pit and you die. But because the fight ends so early, you really don't have to worry about that. The only thing you got to worry about is sometimes when you hit him, he'll like to be funny and destroy the platform that you're about to land on. But thankfully, he went over there and managed his own business. So now we're going to head to the second to last area in the game, which is Sky Road. Sky Road 1 has a really big skip at the beginning. And that's going to involve skipping an entire planet that has these giant caterpillars on them. I will go for it, I'll say, two, maybe three times. I don't want to mess it up too many times. But I'm going to hit this checkpoint just for safety reasons as well, so that if I mess it up, I can just either take a death and come back or I don't think that's a fully charged spin dash. That one is though. So I'm gonna need to get close enough to return gravity to normal, like so, but not close enough to actually get pulled into the gravity of that planet. Double jump, and I made it. Nice. The scary thing about that is the gravity that pulls you in extends out pretty far, but based off of what you have to do is not too much leeway on it so if I wasn't close enough I would have just kept falling straight and it take about seven maybe eight seconds to die something like that and if I was too close to the planet when it was changing my gravity then I would went into free fall and I have to take a depth off the caterpillar to give that one more attempt but all worked out so that's nice to see and we're going to actually save this eagle for this part right here so I can skip having to actually travel upward and instead crash into the side of this and pull myself up. Nice. So that's the only eagle usage you see in the run. The only other wisp I think you'll be seeing in the run is hover and that's not until the final area of the game. Wisp that you don't actually see in this run are bomb asteroid and yeah just bomb and asteroid you don't see those and those are new to this game and this is kind of like a mini boss fight you just have to hit the missiles back at the turtle and once you do that three times a spring will appear and that shoots you to the final portion of the level which if you know where they're gonna land it makes the fight really simple as you get later into the fight the missile will blow up faster it will basically shoot down a straight line of damage, so if you're underneath it, you'll get hurt. For the end, you just auto run this. Nothing major going on. Just make sure you don't run into the caterpillars or fall into the pit. You can hit the springs if you want to. They don't slow you down much, but I just feel a lot more comfortable jumping because then you have a double jump just in case something goes wrong. So in auto run sections, when you take damage, you just keep trucking through. You don't really have to worry about much of anything for the most part. And that's Sky Road 1. Now, for the next one, we have Sky Road 2. And we're going to meet the final member of the Deadly Six, which is Zavik. And I like going through this stage quite a bit. I'm going to be using spin dashes through the majority of the beginning, which is kind of risky. If you go to the end of any of these dragons that you're going to see and you're still in spin dash mode then it's almost certainly going to kill you so you want to make sure that you jump early but not too early but too late is worse than too early as you can see that's the invisible one you can land on you make it up here and you can grab onto the edge of this and then we're going to work our way up and actually use some of these dragons to help us out nicely done and then we're just going to do a bit more platforming. It's not too much going on in this section, though. So if you have, I'll say, a donation to read, it will be a good time to do so. All right. We have an anonymous $150 donation, enjoying the Sonic block, and very impressed by the skill and dedication of the runners, putting this towards the Paper Mario save block glitch. 
All right, so now we have Zavik here. He's riding this dragon, and the way this works is you're supposed to hit the ball on the tail, and that will completely shut down everything. You're supposed to work your way across the dragon in its entirety, but instead, bounce attack gives you enough height to make it right up to the front, and you can knock him down. And he's going to try to get away, but he takes a little bit too long to do so, so you can just stop it again, make it up to the front, get on top, bop him. And if you want to, you can kind of stand up here for the end. And you'll see Sonic in the air momentarily if I did it right. Because the dragon just kind of disappears like so. That's Sky Road 2. The Sky Road 3 is another auto-scroller, unfortunately. But there are no neat tricks in this one. It's just riding the breeze until you get to the end. And there's a mini boss fight in this. It's quite a lengthy level, so... I would say keep reading donations until I get to the end of this stage. It's Alrighty. Not really much to talk about. We have a $15 donation from Razor and Z Xenon. Hello, everyone from Russia. This is our first time donating. We wish the best of luck to all the runners. It's an incredible event, and we have a fantastic time watching it. Also, good luck to, f to the one and only Sonic completing Sonic Lost World. We also have an anonymous $20 donation. I had to put my cat down yesterday because he had cancer in his leg. I don't like cancer. I like people trying to stop cancer, killing people, and cats. We have a $5 donation from Maddox88. Hey, AGDQ. Lost my grandfather to cancer and a close family friend. Thank you for what you do, and game on. We have also a $10 donation from Lioness. My mom was diagnosed with lung cancer right before Christmas. The original Sonic the Hedgehog was the first video game she ever bought me. This donation is for her. Money goes to runner's choice. Love you, mom. We also have a $5 donation from Cringy. Didn't expect to be so entranced by DS's commentary after the GBA Sonic block. Keep up the awesome work. We have a $75 donation from Ashura. Had to donate during the Sonic block. Sad not to see some classic Sonic, but learning all about Sonic Lost World in this awesome run more than makes up for it. Also, if you're a Sonic fan, you gotta be an animal lover, right? Save the animals. Let's outrun cancer, guys. Gotta go fast. Captain Dig also gave $15. Overslept a bit, so I missed some of the Sonic block, but what I have seen has been amazing. Good luck to everyone running. We have an anonymous $20 donation. Awesome job collecting those donation, guys. Keep up the work. Respect. All right, so now we have the mini boss fight, and this is actually pretty fast if you do it right. That was good enough. But you just hit the rockets back at them in three hits, and it's over with. But yeah, it's easily the most boring stage, I'd say. So hope everybody got their resident sleepers in. So next up we got Sky Road Zone 4 and this is pretty much the, I don't want to say final confrontation of the Deadly Six, but before this you'll be seeing, uh, you'll see them all one more time and it'll be the last you see of them. But Sky Road Zone 4 is the longest stage in the game if I'm not mistaken, even if you're speed running it, so about four minutes or so, give or take, depending on what happens. But it's going to consist of some 2D sections and some 3D sliding sections. I'm going to use the infinite wall exploit right here. And there should be a spring off. Yeah. I'm going to use it right here as well. Skip that part. And this screen actually wraps around. And this stage is kind of weird. I'm not too happy about the design choice because the screen basically follows you up. And as it follows you up, the kill plane also is risen up to so if you try to like say do a jump and uh, don't make it to the next platform or something like that then sometimes you can actually still see Sonic just kind of falling in place because of where the kill plan is located but you shouldn't have to worry about it too much kind of situational but you're not too careful with your platform and it can happen and there aren't really any tricks for this level per se it's pretty straightforward there is a potential trick that could happen for this section coming up. I've been looking into it quite a bit. 
because the way that these stages are laid out is actually kind of interesting when you can see them the final section of the stage is actually to my right right now if there was some way to say for example break out of this section all the way at the top do a spin dash jump and make it all the way to the end and skip this next 3d section which would save quite a bit of time if possible but right now it is possible to break out using the rhythm wisp which i still have on me but break out too low for that actually do anything beneficial with it now these sections although you wouldn't know it unless it happened do have some unfortunate kill setups in them there are some setups and one being at the very end of the section which kind of sucks where if you get hit by the smaller cactus and then get well rather if you get hit by the smaller cactus and you'll see when i get to the end of the section but if you get hit by that one you're guaranteed to get hit by the bigger one that's going to be trailing behind it and if you get hit by that then that's gg because they're not going to have any rings but they're pretty easy to avoid it is rather unfortunate that there's no way of telling that it's going to kill you but it's these right here if one of these hits you then you won't have any rings and those are guaranteed to hit you you have to do the whole section over which i mean once you know that you should be fine next time around but it's one of those unfair deaths that the game does have to offer not too many of them in the game but that is one of them these springs if you do a bounce attack you get more height on them if you do a normal landing you get less height it's typically not more beneficial to get a regular bounce than a high one so i just go for the high one all the time and you see another infinite wall exploit right there nice the way the bounce attack works in this game because it allows you to make it through that section smoothly and now we're gonna have zavik show up one more time and i'm gonna actually use the small amount of time i have at the beginning of this boss fight to jump on the other side of him because he's gonna start off with a punch attack and that's gonna target whichever side i'm on so if you just stand there he goes all the way to the left but instead he'll go now all the way to the right because I do deal enough damage to him in three phases, he's going to run and break off pieces. I'm going to jump across him one more time because I wanted to use this attack without turning around first. Then I wait for him to turn around. So hopefully the laser will be out of my way. And then got caught by the second one. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen sometimes. Just a small time waste. I'm going to break off one more piece, and then I'm going to get on the other side of him. Now he's going to do a triple attack. You just go right over him. Now this time I'm not going to do a fully charged one first. I'm going to do a single. That has him on tilt. And then final hit. Some people do struggle with this boss fight because they don't realize that at the end you have to do a fully charged home and attack. Some people run through the game without knowing that that actually does more damage. But once you figure it out, easy boss fight. And that's a hidden stage in the game. It's, well, it's technically six, but within the main route of the game is two of them you don't have to do them uh they're primarily for lives i would say so now we're in the final area we have lava mountain one and in lava mountain one you're going to see three returning bosses it's going to be the first three of the game so we're going to have zaz then zomom and then zeke and even though this is a boss rush and it's near the end of the game these should be fairly simple to do the main one that can give you issues with this one, I would say, is Zomom. Because sometimes Zomom's hitboxes are kind of wonky. And if you don't get a fully charged homing attack, then it'll make it so that you can't really... What I want to say. You can't home an attack for a while. And that can make things pretty stressful. Sometimes it can even result in a death. So when you knock him down, he's going to follow you where you go. You need to make him hit the lava and he'll resurface and you can get that's the section where sometimes the hitbox is wonky because it'll lock on and then it'll be like nah I want to give you extra lock ons and kind of messes everything up but that worked out fine now sometimes Zeke likes to show up on the opposite side from what he was when the camera was showing him before his little animation this time it cooperated so that's why I don't move immediately when I'm fighting this part but there we go that's the boss rush now, I'm going to be facing more bosses in Zone 3, but there's going to be stages that lead up to a boss when I get to Zone 3. And now we have the second rail section of the game, which is Lava Mountain Zone 2. Probably the hardest 
level to speed run, in my opinion. And there's going to be a 3D section, 2D section, 3D section, 2D section, and then finally a 3D section. If I do everything properly, I should get 3D and 2D twice. The thing is, while it is really nice to show off and it gives you a ton of speed, it does waste a lot of time if you die. Because I'm not going to hit this checkpoint if I do it properly. And he's in 2D, so I didn't get the first one, unfortunately. The first one is the easier of the two. So I'm hoping that I get the 3D and 2D for the final part. The thing that makes these so difficult, I would say, is these bomb carts. Because you're going to be moving faster than they anticipate for you to be able to move. And because of that, um, you're going to be encountering bombs at locations where you normally are not going to want to encounter a bomb. And you just have to kind of deal with it. And 2D is pretty simple to stay alive, but not quite as interesting to watch. Now, I haven't actually done this section in a while in 2D. But it's fine. This is the part that I worry about. You actually want to wait those bombs out because, yeah, that jump right there. Now, the second 3D and 2D, I'm not going to be jumping around the trigger. And that's what makes that one kind of weird. Um, I'm going to have to jump at a particular point. If I jump at the right time, I'll have 3D when I land on the rail. If I don't, it'll be in 2D. So I'm hoping I get it. Um, you only get one shot at this one. So if I don't get it, unfortunately, I won't be able to show off the 3D and 2D really nice if I could we'll see what happens 2d is safer not quite as interesting to watch it should be safer I've been primarily doing it in 3d uh, but when you're in 2d because you're going slower you have more time to react and plan out what you want to do aside from the final bomb section that one's a little wonky in terms of what you have to do in 2d but I'm gonna hopefully get this jump timer right Things might not go according to plan the first few times, but if I do get the 3D, the other downside is that I'm committed to that 3D. I cannot opt to go back into 2D afterward. That might have been it, and that is. So now I'm in 3D, and you can notice that I can weave in and out. Those bombs are when hit kill, so that's a pretty tight jump there. The one that I worry about the most, however, is at the very end of the section. If you notice, I'm going a lot faster than I'm supposed to. So much so that I can skip this bomb cycle. Usually you have to wait for those bombs, but you don't. And for this part, I'm going to jump, go out to the left, come back in. And I messed it up, unfortunately. And that's probably the hardest part of the second rail section outside of this first one. I've been doing pretty fine with that one. However, it's a little bit of leeway. Not the most leeway in the world. Yeah, the only thing is, as I said before, you're committed to this, so I cannot opt to say, hey, I want 2D and have an easier time getting out of here. I'm committed to this 3D now. And there we go. Out of there. And the rest of the level was pretty straightforward. So I say if you have two donations, now would be a good time to read it. All right, sounds good. We have a $15 donation from the Nagari. I love the event and the work you do. My mother had an early cancer scare during last year, but eight AGDQ, but thankfully it was a false scare. In honor of the new Star Wars movie, let's channel our inner, inner Sith and kill all the animals. Uh, we have a $20 donation from Terrier92. Long time watcher, first time donator. Loving all the runs. All right, so now we have Lava Mountain Zone 3 in. And this one, there's going to be like level and then boss fight. Or I'd say like a 3D section, a 2D section, and then a boss fight at the end of the 2D section. So you're going to be seeing the final three members in order once again for Lava Mountain Zone 3. So we're going to run into Xena, we're going to run into Zor, and we're going to run into Zavik. Oh, it's kind of scary. I have to improvise a little bit for this one. All right, still alive, so that's a good thing. But yeah, 3D sections are pretty straightforward, and 2D sections just knowing all about your platform. The lava at the bottom that's rising will one hit kill you, but the lava that's not rising will not one hit kill you. It'll instead just damage you, if memory serves me correctly. So, I'm going to do a bit more platforming and work our way up to the Xena. It's the first fight. 
And for this one, I just need to get two fully charged homing attacks. I'm going to be taking damage after the first one if all goes well. That was almost a death. So I'm going to play this a little bit safe. All right, cool. Not used to that facing down, so I'm glad I caught on to that. Normally, I just use the ramp to go right over and make it out of there. But if I was just hell spin dash, I would have went straight into the lava. That's good, and I was paying attention there. I'm gonna actually skip this instead of going all the way to the right and then back to the left. Can use our wall run to make it up there. Nice little time save. I'm gonna make it to the next 2D section where we have Zora awaiting us at the top. Can actually make it past both of those spike balls if they're fast enough. And that one is pretty easy to make it pass. I'm going to actually be taking damage intentionally right here. Didn't know if I had rings or not, so I'm going to play a little bit safe. Now, we're going to actually use hover here, which is why I was saving it. And if everything goes according to plan, I should still have my hover when I make it out of this section. Nice. Because if you're fast enough, you can keep your hover if you're too slow. However, then you'll have to activate Hover again, which wastes a bit of time. For safety reasons, I'm going to hit that checkpoint. This is actually a really easy one. This is a little bit different. You don't attack Zora directly. You just make it up to the top and remove all platforms, which causes him to fall to his demise. Thankfully, you can just kind of stay on the side and double jump, and he does his little dance at the bottom while you cruise up to the top. And there you go. He tried to make it up, but better luck next time. Now I'm going to actually grab this and show off the uh, infinite wall run in 3D yet again. This is so that you don't have to worry about the uh, bombs that are headed towards you as you run. Now I'm going to want to keep this hover as long as I can. Preferably until I get to the second part of the 2D section because that's going to save me some time if I do. And I shouldn't really have to worry about anything in this section. It's just, yeah, there we go. Now, if I can make it up to the second half of this section without dying, I can actually use the hover to save quite a bit of time. It's not too out of the ordinary where I die in this section if I'm getting a little too greedy like that, but it worked out this time. So now we're going to work our way up this S tube and activate hover. And now, instead of doing more of what I just did, I can just weave in and out. So let me get up to the top. Now, normally I'm very confident with this boss fight, but. Let's be on the safe side and grab that checkpoint. Now, Zaffy is going to open this up going to either the left or the right. So I'm going to charge a spin dash. If he comes my way, I can just cancel it. Stay behind him and get the free hit. Now, he's going to go into his Bowser-esque form. You'll see why I said that when it happens. And basically, this part of the boss fight, he's supposed to chase you up to the top as you drop platforms on him. But if you use these platforms wisely, you don't have to actually run away from him the scary part right there. If you bounce attack incorrectly, then that'll end up killing you. I'm glad that killed, because if that didn't kill, I would have had to go up higher and, and it would have wasted some time. It wouldn't have been too difficult, I would say. I don't really have any plans beyond that point. Just find one and drop it on them. And now we're going to actually make it to the final zone of the game, which is not a stage, it's the final boss fight, which is against Dr. Eggman. And this boss fight is, once again, rather trivial. But unlike the other boss fights, it, it's kind of easy to die because he's going to basically do three attacks back to back. And the way this works is if you take damage in two of those attack sequences, then that's it. Because you only get rings when you damage him. And you only get an opportunity to damage him after he's done the sequence of attacks. But they're fairly easy to avoid. The hardest one to avoid, I would say, is the hand clap but you can either double jump over there or you can bounce attack I say that it's easier to double jump over but sometimes I like to do the bounce attack just to switch things up so after he does a series of attacks you attack the leg then you attack the arms you attack him directly and then you get the charge up and attack him now this is supposed to be two phases if he grunts it's phase two and he did so if you don't hear the grunt, you'll have to go through an attack pattern similar to what you saw in the first one. But if you do get that, then he moves into the second phase where it's the same attacks, but switches it up a little bit. They last a little bit longer and they move a little bit faster. As for the clap, he does two of them instead of one. So if I avoid the first clap, I should be fine because even if I get hit by the second one, I'll have rings. So I'm going to try my best to avoid the first one. 
And this time I'm going to attack to the left and get ready on the timer because time is coming up. Sometimes that'll glitch and you won't actually home and attack up the entire arm, so I'm glad that didn't happen. And once I hit this button, that's going to be time, so... Time. That was 119.52. Nice. Ooh, lad. Uh, my main goal was to get a run that was under 120, so <laughs> I guess I just barely got that, which is nice. But, yeah, that's Sonic Lost World, and I hope you enjoyed the run. I'll be back, Sonic.